last season on the point, a very young D. This year, it's the Brampton Battalion as the veteran club. They have 17 returning players. Could be a great game this afternoon. Battalion and 67s on OHL primetime. Welcome to the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment, everybody. The Ottawa 67s come to Brampton to take on the Brampton Battalion in a key East Coast rivalry. I'm your host, Mark Aaron. Glad you can join us here for another exciting hockey season on Rogers Television. Of course, the Ottawa 67s come into town with some new faces. They've lost a lot of offensive firepower, and they, they say they're going to key on defense first, but you wouldn't know it from last night's game uh, against the St. Mike's Majors. They romped 10-2. Matt Albiani getting five points, as well as Corey Locke. And, of course, the Ottawa 67s once again showing that they can certainly fill the net. Branton Battalion and the Ottawa 67s getting set to do battle. We're going upstairs right now to Doug Anderson and Todd Crocker for more on tonight's game. Gentlemen. So we get set for first period of play here in the Brampton Center and our goalies for tonight's matchup are as follows. In the net for the Brampton Battalion is Kevin Couture, the backup goalie by nature so far this year, but getting a shot tonight. And last year's big man, Lucas Mensator between the pipes for the Ottawa 67s. Well, you look at Kevin Couture, and this is a guy that's had 60 minutes of play so far this season. He's hoping to get a whole lot more, but uh, what his performance is night in, night out will dictate how many minutes he gets in the future. So the battalion going with Chris Clayton on the right side, Ryan Ulihan at center, and Adam Henrik returning from the Florida Panthers. Moving to the left side, Corey Locke, the big centerman for the 67s, is up front with Rodney Bowman on the left side and Matt Albiani on the right side. Clayton takes it deep inside the opinion. He'll dump it behind the net. Henrik has it, feeds it through the slot. Ulihan, Mensator with the save. Bounces in the slot area, finally cleared. Back again, they score! Ryan Ulihan. seemed like it was only a matter of time. Mensator just didn't recover fast enough. When he finally did get in position to uh, try and make this final save after three or four attempts, he just didn't have an eye on the puck here uh, in the final go. He had a couple of shots here. Adam Henrik gets a nice one out front. He's spooked by that one. He makes a tremendous save here, but then he recovers by rolling onto his back when he could have easily just popped up from his pads right there, slid across the crease. Instead, he rolls into the kneeling position, and it's uh, academic after that. Hallis sweeps behind his own net. Outlet pass, Bikel has it at center. Wines, lets one fly. Couture loses it and he scores! Wow, that is a tough one to take uh, as far as the battalion are concerned. In and out of the glove is, uh, is a tough one to have a game tied on. That is, uh, that is uh, no excuse when you look at that in the, uh, in the video. When you, when you look back as a goaltender, you don't have a lot of excuses for that hopping in and out. Especially just from that far away. Yep. A little too casual, not facing enough action out front. And Pierre Mitsu, one of the few veterans on the blue line for Ottawa. Outlet pass, Bakel will try it again. He scores! Brian Bakel beating Kevin Couture one more time. It's 2 1 Ottawa. Well, and just uh, just as we finish saying, uh, going to that same spot, uh, coming off the coming off the point, sliding in and uh, just putting it onto the glove side, and getting past Couture. And if uh, if they found something, it could be a long afternoon. Akerson with a nice outlet pass to feed Bakel. This is the same spot that they scored from before, and they've tested it now three, four times, and. If that's the situation, then Stan Butler has got to find a way to make sure that that shot isn't there. McCormick steps around Talbot, feeds it to the front of the net, deflected, loose puck in the slot. They can't get another crack at it. McPherson takes a shot. Finally cleared in the corner in the pile up in front of Lukas Mensator. Kreps lets it go, deflects in front by Clayton and just wide. Ulihan jumps on the loose puck, lays it for Adam Henrik in the corner. Hallis watching him, fed out in front, they score! Ryan Ulihan makes it 2-2. 
Well, the battalion came out and did what they had to do. They had to tie it up early, which they did on the power play, and uh, that goes back to our keys of the game. Ottawa has to stay out of the box, but look at the escapability of Adam Henrik here out of the corner. Dances around out there looking for a partner, finally gets one, and wow, that is some talented hockey. You know, and Hallis not taking the body, went for the stick check in the corner, and that was the difference when you got a big guy like Henrik stepping out. Oh, he just controlled that right out of the corner. Beautiful play. Nice job by Ulahan to go shelf and beat Lukas Mensator. In front, that shot's deflected. Jamie Fraser off his boot in the corner. Picked up by Ottawa. Tuplin looking for a loose man in front. They score! Cardinal rule of hockey. Never give up one on the next, uh, on the next play. And... Brampton breaks it there. They uh, they decide that uh, they're going to lay off just a little bit and let Ottawa attack. The 67s get all over them here, throw it out of the corner and make things happen. Look at Julian Talbot just sort of back away from Brock McPherson, find some open room in front of Kevin Couture and beat him with the one-timer. Adam Henrik makes the move on. Elgin Reed, Henrik going wide, leaves it for Clayton. There's the shot, he scores! Chris Clayton makes it 3-3. What a job from Adam Henrik finding Chris Clayton to tie the game. Well, there is a good reason that the Tampa Bay Lightning took a good long look at Adam Henrik. <laughs> we see it right there. He undresses his man out front, goes the length of the ice, and a lot of players at this level right here would want to take it straight to the net. He's savvy enough to realize Clayton's following him. He puts it on his stick right on the tape, and Clayton buries it. Early in the OHL season, and you can certainly tell the guys that have played more than 20 or 30 games together. He just knew that Clayton would be joining him. Henrik has it, looking in front. Henrik steps in front, gets the rebound, tries to slide it under Mensator. Loose puck in the crease. Corey Locke to clear it away. Pile up ensues. Henrik in the middle of it, and bodies flying everywhere. Mankari drops his gloves. Henrik has lost his bucket. We've got Albiani tied up with Ryan Ulihan. Eric Schwantz tied up with Rodney Bauman. A lot, of, a lot of dancing, nobody takes the lead here. Three battalion players, as we mentioned here in the early going of the OHL season, Jordy Michi, Patrick Sweeney, as well as Elliot McCormick, all played on the same line in Bantam with the Nepean Raiders. They're all drafted as a line. Well, that Battalion score, take the lead, 4-3. Camille Kreps will get the goal. This one looked pretty simple, but it just comes out of a, out of a breakdown in communication between that, uh, those young Ottawa players who are saying to themselves, uh, no, somebody else has got to get this guy. Everybody gets crossed up here with a couple of forwards caught high there, and nobody takes the man who straight streaks in, and Buries the puck. Nice goal, nice choice. 119 pounds. Not bad at 18 years of age. Well, it's a weight I'd like to get down to, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Fraser from the point. Let's it fly. Mentator with the splits. Loose puck. McPherson scores! 5-3 Battalion. And I believe that is young Brock McPherson's first OHL goal. They're sure mobbing him like it was, and... The things that happen on this play are some good, strong work in getting out front and clouding the goaltender's view here by the Brampton Battalion. But also, just what I just talked about, we see that the goaltender is down. He's trying to make some sort of acrobatic play when all he needed to do was just stand there, cut the angle off. It was going to hit him anyway. Instead, he went to kick it out and make some sort of spectacular looking play for the highlight reel. Cost his team a goal. And for McPherson in front. Brock McPherson picked up his first OHL goal in the second period. Jamie Fraser back for Fulski one-timer. Mensator slides across, makes the save. 23 seconds left in Mitsu's penalty. Well, that goal mount was gaping, and uh, Volsky, you'll see here, has a great opportunity here as he throws it across ice. He gets the pass back on the give and go, but instead of just one-timing it in, he just had to control the pass a little bit. Corey Locke drops back to man the point on this power play opportunity. 
to McCallis. Back for Locke. He lets it go and scores. Corey Locke makes it 5-4. Hang on to your hats, folks. There's still a buck nine left. There's, there's some folks that just, I, you know, they're about halfway out. They uh, had their hand on the door to the outside and heard that and thought, perhaps we'll just come back to the seats just for a little bit. Not a bad idea. Always nice to stick around as well for the three-star selection. Yeah, no question about it. You know, you give Corey Locke an opportunity like this, and very seldom does wow. he miss his target. Even giving him a look here, well, not right now, anyway, of course, with Brampton with the puck. But... Ulihan across the blue line. Mitsu watching him. Ulihan trying to step in front. Henrik rings it off the crossbar. What a wrist shot from Adam Henrik. You got to know the guy loves playing it because he had a smile on his face after that. Ulihan to Clayton. He fires it over top of the net. Adam Henrik with a howitzer of a wrist shot. Blows it past Menzator and off the crossbar. Under 30 seconds left on the clock. Albiani stopped up at center ice. Akerson has it. Jeremy Akerson to Corey Locke. Let's it go. Couture hangs on, squaring up nicely to the shot. Do exactly what he did. He squared up nicely. Here it is again. Corey Locke. Didn't have it. Albiani from the point. His shot blocked. Picked off. Camille Kreps with the open net across center and misses the open net. But that should do it as the game clock comes to a close. The final seconds tick away on the Ottawa 67. Brampton Battalion score four times in the second period for a 5-4 win over the 67. Well, a good game from Brampton, a, a good early season game. It's not something you want at game 60, but it does enough to get the job done here. The Ottawa 67s didn't put the pressure on in the late going like, uh, like they needed to do, down 5-3. They just did not have it left to give. Stay with us on OHO Primetime, coming back with our three-star selection and the game wrap-up. 5-4, the final score, Battalion win on home ice over the Ottawa 67s. Coming back with more on Roger Sports. Final score from the Brampton Center, 5-4. The battalion knock it off, the Ottawa 67s. And after a big win last night in Toronto, the 67s come up a little shy in the third period of play. Well, it's tough in any league to win two in two days. <laughs> and uh, it sounds you know, like it should be able to be done. Uh, two in a row, what's the big deal? Two in a row on the road is hard to do. Yeah, but a big game by Brian Bacall. J a good job. One goal that maybe uh, Kevin Couture wanted back, but Bacall comes back and beats him again from the same spot. Hey, both these teams are going to challenge. They've got some good players. And over the course of the season, they're going to rise to the top of their teams. And they're going to actually make an impact here. And, and i got to tell you, Ottawa looks like a team that could come back and, and play this Brampton team and win. Let's take a look at some of the guys that made a difference in the battalion lineup tonight as they garnered all three stars. The third star going to Ryan Ulihan, telling twice in the first period. And Chris Clayton picks up second star. Adam Henrik, the first star, and what a game he had. Well, what a 40 minutes he had. Uh, he, he played that first 20 minutes, and he seemed kind of disappointed at, at, at being here. And then, bingo, uh, he, he lit it up. Yeah. He owned the ice when he touched the puck. He, well, that wraps things up here from the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment. Once again, I'm your host, Mark Aaron for Doug Anderson and Todd Crocker and everybody here at Rogers Television. I bid you good night.